Greetings, my friends. I'm Viking Brent, and welcome to our live postmortem for Uncharted 4. We are so happy to be here with you tonight, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. I, of course, am joined by my good friend, Mr. Lauren Baumgarten. Lauren? Brent Adams, how are you, my friend? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, Do me a favor and talk for a minute while I embed the player over on our website so people can find us if they want to. Nah, the people on the website aren't really that important. If they haven't found us already, then fuck them. <laughs> There's not much we could do to help them at that point. Uh, I am super excited to be talking to you about this game, my friend. I saw that you you did. Did you play the entire game on Outlaw Gamers? Uh, yes, I did. I played. You I, did. I live streamed. Uh, I live streamed the entire game as part of a uh, a massive new game smell experience that uh, that people. <laughs> It's not the one that people deserved, but it's the one that they needed. <laughs> uh, your massive smell uh, was well received. I saw you play. I yeah. watched you play some of it. I I played through this game. Did I, I finish the game before you started? Didn't I? Yeah, I think you did, buddy. Yeah, I, so I, say I think you did. So I watched some of your gameplay, uh, and it was quite enjoyable to watch. But I'm I'm really excited to talk to you about it. I'm very. I only watched the first couple hours because I wanted to keep. Uh, this conversation here, fresh, the postmortem. Brent and I have not spoken about the game, n- nary a word. No, we've been uh, too busy prepping the show. That's right. So uh, <laughs> I wanted to keep this conversation fresh. I'm really excited to hear uh, your thoughts on the game and to take it apart. I know that uh, our listeners, many of whom are, are joining us now live, uh, have some definite opinions on the game, and so I'm excited to talk about it. Yep, as am I. So, uh, everybody, just a couple of things before we start off today. Obviously, um, this is uh, this is the first sort of like live show that we've done in the way that we're doing it right now. Uh, and so, if there's any kind of technical problems or things like that, we'll do our best to adjust. If uh, if like Lauren's levels are a little bit low, they need to come up. You know, just any of that kind of stuff. Just let us know in chat. We'll do our we'll do our best uh, to uh, to adjust. For uh, for whatever comes, but um, anyway. I cannot make my voice sound less Jewish. Just to be clear, <laughs> and who would want you to? Come Brent, on. Brent has no filter for that. Who would want you to? So, Lauren, I guess um, I guess that the the logical question here is uh, where, where do we start? I mean, where where do you start? Uh, where do you start with this game? Well. That is a, it's a good question, and we've broken down for the postmortem. We're going to do it very similar uh, to the structure in which we have done previous postmortems. We have broken out the game to talk about things like narrative and themes, and um, you know, art and music and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, overall, Brent, I think it would be a good place to start uh, with. You put a poll up asking people what was their favorite Uncharted game. Yep. Uh, and I think we could go over those poll results and and talk about our general impressions and sort of where it fits for us. Uh, in the in the uncharted canon, I don't know. What do you think? That sounds like a great idea. Why don't Why don't we go ahead and do that? So, uh, I asked you guys the simple question: Which was your favorite uncharted game? And here's how the results uh, shook out. You had five possible answers, tied for uh, last place, which I guess in theory is only going to give us four answers. But tied in last place was the first game, Uncharted: Drake's Fortune, as well as Uncharted: Golden Abyss, the entry on the Vita. Uh, in third place with 4% of the vote, was Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Second place went to Uncharted 4, A Thief's Sin, the game we'll be talking about today. But the number one answer, with a narrow a narrow majority, 52%, you selected Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. So, uh, I'm curious, Brent, yes. uh, in, in your... You've, have you played all five of those games? Did you play Golden Abyss? I did, yeah. Uh, so, in your list, how, how, would your list match that, or how, how would it shake out? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that I would put. I, I I would definitely be close to this. I think my list would go something like Golden Abyss, Drake's Fortune, Uncharted Three, Four, and then Among Thieves. I think it would go something like that. Gotcha. So mine would Pretty be uh, certainly Golden Abyss would be at the bottom, but I actually uh, I think I would put Drake's Fortune ahead of uh, Three. Um, I, I don't necessarily, I don't think if I sort of now looked at them objectively that I would say that, that Uncharted Drake's Fortune is a better game yeah. than Uncharted 3, but um, the, I enjoyed the, it the more. The mechanics of one were a little bit more clunky. Yeah, but I, I actually enjoyed Drake's Fortune more. At the time that Drake's Fortune came around, the only other really adventure games I felt like that we had of this ilk were uh, Tomb Raiders, and, and none of them were quite to the quality of Drake's Fortune. And I loved Drake's Fortune when it came around. By the time uh, I got to Uncharted 
two was so good that by the time I got to three, um, and I think you alluded to this in your uh, recordings, I wasn't, uh, three didn't do a ton for me at the time. I enjoyed it, but I, I, I it didn't. It just paled I, in I, comparison with two. It did, and so it was. Hey, I think objectively, it's a better game than Uncharted: Drake's Fortune. But I enjoyed Drake's Fortune more, and I think it was more meaningful to me. And so I think I would put that above. It was a bigger uh, deal just because of you know what it represented when it came out, and yeah, and all. That. Uh, and then I got to tell you, man, I think I think I would put Uncharted Four above Uncharted Two. Um, I, I there's no there's no way I would do that. Um, and, and, well, and we'll talk about we'll talk that, about that why. will be an interesting thing to talk about as we go forward today, but. Yeah, there's absolutely no chance that I would I would put four above two. The, <laughs> uh, fair enough. Well, let's talk about it. So, all right, um, let's let's jump into the story. Uh, and, and in the, terms uh, of story, I would say I'd put Uncharted four above Uncharted two. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, really, but, you're not. You're you're kidding. N- well, no, I was I was really just uh, I was really just trying to be an asshole uh, more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, you know what? Don't don't even. You don't have to try, dude. Let's, let's just, talk just... about that. So, so so first off, let's just talk about the let's just talk about the narrative. Let's just kind of talk about the story and the themes of this game. Yeah. So uh, there's several different stories going on in this game, and this was this was my favorite part of uh, of Uncharted Four was the story, unquestionably. And we're going to talk about like game mechanics and and. Um, my least favorite uh, and design and that sort of thing. But story was uh, uh, undoubtedly my favorite part of this game. And it was what makes this the best game in this series for me. And I feel like, and, and tell me your thoughts on this, Brent, but I feel yeah. like there were um, sort of four different stories going on. Um, there's the sort of the story of Nate and Sam, his brother, his older brother uh, as children uh, and sort of Nate's origin story and their relationship uh, when they were younger. Certainly. There, yeah. There was the story of um, Elena and Nate in their sort of normal life. Uh, there's the juxtaposition, the sort of story of the push and pull for Nate about his desire to be a treasure hunter versus that normal life. Yeah, uh, and and then the the sort of the adventure story, the pirate story in there the, of of uh, Avery and Two and Libertalia, uh, and that story. Yeah, all true. Um, so there were really multiple stories going on, and. Uh, Oh, by the way, it, it goes without saying, but this is like it's going to be spoilery from beginning to end. So just to, just in case, <laughs> yes. Yes. just in case, it is. Uh, I want to be very clear about that. Uh, and then uh, you know, I saw some of the folks in the comments already asking the question, like, "Did you cry at the end of it?" Uh, another sort of not not its own story, but just a beautiful, beautiful story point, which is the epilogue with uh, Nate and Elena's daughter and that sort of thing. And um, did we give the spoiler warning yet? Yeah, well, we gave it. Um, so, uh, so, so there's multiple stories going on, uh, and they were to me the most compelling. Um, not only in this franchise, but it, but in, in some of them in all of gaming. I mean, I was really, really moved by Nathan and Sam as kids, and and I want to talk about that in a little more detail. Yeah, uh, and I thought it was really interesting uh, the sort of Nate and, Ale- and Elena's relationship as normal people. Um, I agree. I mean, you know that 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 prologue to the game is is amazing. It, you know, in that regard, it uh, it just um, it gives you like a, a really different perspective and context for Nathan Drake as a character. You know, and to kind of see, you know, we all know him as the adventurer from the games, but to see who he was before that, which we got a little bit of a peek of that in Uncharted Three. Uh, during that uh, that chapter where he meets Sully, but to see where he was before even that, and then to see kind of where he ends up after all of that, um, you know, settling down into a normal life as Chapter Four is called with Elena, it was uh, it was really interesting, and and there's there's parts about that that I absolutely uh, that I absolutely love. I mean. Like the the beginning of the beginning of the uh, of chapter four, where you're you're diving on that, uh, you don't quite know what it is at first, but it ends up being a tractor trailer that's like gone off a bridge, and you're you're salvaging, uh, you know, the cargo that was on board. I, I had like so much fun with that. I said like I'll play an entire game of this. Like I don't care. Like Drake can retire from the fortune hunting. I'll do this. This is fun. Um, but it, it was it was really interesting the way that they were able to tie in gameplay and things like that into that section. I mean, the Crash Bandicoot, uh, the, the Crash Bandicoot part of Chapter Four, 
is fantastic, you know? And so yes. that's the thing, like, even it, it, it should be just like straight up storytelling. But, uh, I mean, they could have done it as a cutscene, but I love the way that they infuse gameplay into that, uh, with, you know, the Nerf gun up in the attic, uh, you know, where Drake's run, running around. And, and of course, it's, you know, it's, it's twofold. It's teaching you shooting mechanics and stuff like that. But, um, I, I, I really, I really dug all that. But from the story standpoint, I don't know. It was like really cool. It was kind of like how you, it was kind of like how you always hoped that, you know, Drake and Elena would end up. It is absolutely. And, and so starting with the, I really do want to dive in a little bit to the Nate and Sam piece, uh, when they were kids, you know, the, the, the game starts out with, um, it was a great opening where you're on the boat you know, on the ocean, right? You're with Sam and it, comes back around later in the game in a very sort of uncharted opening yeah kind of over the top and i loved it and then suddenly in the first in chapter that was the prologue in chapter one uh which is called the lure of adventure which i love the title of that chapter uh is is sort of the beginning of the two of them in the orphanage and and it had this just really well done sense of um cross between like, of like young teen adventure like hardy boys or goonies or like this not quite goonies but this young teen adventure the, the goonies feel. part comes later the goonies part does come later yeah in a big big way in yeah. a big way uh i actually when i was watching the game was thinking to myself like it's our time it's our time down here <laughs> um but uh uh the footage that uh i, I think you are going to show or are showing about uh, of that chapter where they're running across the roofs, it had this real sort of young teen adventure feel to it, which is a genre that I absolutely love. Um, and they captured it so well in, in, in not just in this opening scene, but uh, in the other scenes throughout the game, we'll talk about those as well. Um, but uh, um, which I think chapter 16 is called the brothers Drake. It's that one where you take the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that scene as well, but that's exactly right. But um it was just such a wonderful beginning to the game and so unexpected for me. And I have to say, in Uncharted 3, that I, I replayed uh, uh, the beginning of Uncharted 3 recently, like just a few weeks ago. And still, that scene where you're meeting young Nathan Drake and that with the whole Sully thing mm -hmm. just felt did not feel natural to me. It, something about it just felt off. The first time I played it, the neck, the, this last time I played it, it didn't feel like they got it right. Okay. And here, it really feels like they got it right. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, I I don't think I felt I don't think that I felt that put off by what was in three, but certainly I, I agree that you know that what what they're doing here with Drake and Sam as as kids uh, plays pretty strong. Yeah, and I thought the the kid we'll talk about the actors later, but the kid who yeah. played young Sam and the kids who played young Sam and Nate did a great job. But definitely. Um. Uh. So I I really 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 liked that piece of the story, uh, and then again I liked uh the the. Not just the, I loved, I think everybody loved that scene where you're doing the shooting up in the attic and you come down and you play Crash Bandicoot and you have conversations with your wife. I think everybody was, was really touched by that scene, but also the way that played out throughout the whole game of their relationship and how Nate lied to her. I like the fact that, that, you know, him lying to her was a thing in, in the game and sort of their back and forth. And I just, I, I just, I really thought it was wonderful. And the, the, so I thought those pieces were very meaningful, and they were tr real, true storytelling done in a way that's not frequently done in games. And I, I and I just I I really really liked it. Yeah, I have to I have to agree 100. percent I mean the as as the the thing that's kind of interesting in terms of the pacing of that too is just like the game starts off with a big bang, you know, with that that uh, that scene on the boat at night, uh, where you know Sam and Drake are on that little I don't know dinghy or you know whatever. It, I don't know what kind of boat that is, but you know, they're on that little boat and they're getting chased by as we come to find out uh shoreline. And then, you know, that gigantic cutter uh, sneaks up them, sneaks up on them in the dark while it's on fire, which you think would make it easy to see. And yet it gets them. And, you know, so it just, you know, crashes into the camera and then, you know, cut to black. And um, so it's really interesting the way the game kind of sets up a certain anticipation for, high adventure, high octane action. But then it really goes through a slow kind of, uh, kind of build with, you know, young Nate and Sam, and then, you know, Nate and Elena at home and everything before, uh, before you are. And I, I guess actually, I guess we're actually kind of skipping something, aren't we? Because I'm, I'm trying to remember where does the stuff in the Panama prison, where does that, well, fall? so that comes, that, so that, that it comes opens right up, after young Nate and Sam, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. So it's, it opens up with the boat thing, really high action adventure. And I thought it was brilliant. Then you, you kind of come down to this slower thing. 
you have this totally different vibe, and yeah. then the next chapter it switches, the vibe changes completely again, and you're in this just gorgeously rendered, uh, very cool looking um, uh, uh, Panamanian jail uh, in chapter two. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was fantastic. I thought I thought it was a, a really cool transition. It was absolutely beautiful. Have we played as somebody other than Nathan Drake in the uh, in the single player campaign in any of the other games? Did were there any sections where you played as Elena or Sully? I, I, I'm struggling to remember. No, I, not to my recollection. I don't think so. I can't. I can't recall either. Of course, if we're wrong, somebody in chat can uh, can school us on that. But <clears throat> I, I, one of the things that I thought was really interesting about the game was the way that you were able to kind of cut away from the main action, and you know the way that you'll do in films. You know, you'll kind of cut to either what's going on with the bad guys, or you'll cut to a beast. You know, like, like a subplot, a, a B storyline, and. I I really dug the way that that uh, that that worked in this game. You know, we're able to cut away and see things going on with Sam. Uh, you know, going back in time to you know to see Sam's escape from the jail at one point, and you know some of those uh, some of those moments were were pretty interesting. I agree. Um, so the other thing about the story that I really liked, I mean, the, the sort of push pull of Nate's desire to be a treasure hunter and desire to be normal. That's that's kind of kind of standard fare and, and to be expected. And I thought it was well done here. But uh, also the story of Avery and two and the and Libertalia. I, to me, this was the most compelling of the four games uh, from the adventure story standpoint. I, I agree with that, and I think I think the reason is because it's it's so wrapped up in the drama. You know, the story of Avery and two, and the, uh, the you know the, this pirate utopia. It's something that you know Nate and Sam have been looking for their whole lives. You know, it goes back to when they were kids, and of course, it's wrapped up in their relationship. I mean, you know, Nate at one point, you know, burns all the bridges that there are to burn with Elena and Sully to, uh, to, to you know, to go with his brother. And, you know, the, the decision is, is like, you can't point to one thing and say, well, he's doing it because he wants the treasure or he's doing it, uh, you know, because his dead brother is not dead. And, you know, he, he feels that he owes him, you know, he feels guilty about leaving him behind. It's all those things, you know, and and I think that that's a real testament to the writing is that they're able to they're able to ground that pirate adventure or you know the motivation to go on it not just you know fortune and glory kid but you know the the reasons for for going on that grand adventure uh, are really rooted in some compelling drama you know that's just relationships Nate Sam Nate Elena Nate Sully yep. Uh, you know what's interesting uh, is I I thought you were going to say something that I, and it triggered this thought in my head that I never thought of before. Yeah. But Avery and I want a relationship between Avery and Two as brothers, and Sam and Nate as brothers. Even though Avery and Two weren't actual brothers, but they were the two sort of leaders of that whole thing and ultimately betrayed each other. Yeah. Um. And I and I thought that's where you were going to go with that, and I had well, never there, thought about an that. Interesting. I I I was thinking about that because there's an interesting parallel to it. Yeah. So, I, so from a story standpoint, I, I, I really feel like this is far and away the strongest, from my perspective, the strongest in the series, and, and one of the strongest games uh, um, ever made. I, I just, I was really, really compelled. You know, Ozzy uh, Legend said in the comments how how the, the really liked the deliberate pace of this game. Yep. Uh, and we'll talk about pacing, but but I think that having those other stories, those more personal stories, brought some of that pacing into the game. Uh, and and I really liked yeah. uh, not only the back and forth uh, from th- from the different perspectives of those stories, but what they had to say within each of those stories. And I, I just I thought it was phenomenal. I, I agree. I, I think I think that this is the best written of of any of the games uh, in the Uncharted series, and it's one of the best written games ever made. Um, it's interesting to compare this to you know to things that no doubt were an influence, but I, I liken this to uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in the sense that 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 story again was high adventure, but grounded in really relatable personal drama. You know, in that case, the relationship between a father and son, and this is really about uh, Nate and uh, and Sam, obviously. But um, the writing is is fantastic. Let's talk about Sam a little bit as a character. Obviously, you know the fact that Nathan Bra- uh, the, the fact that Nathan Drake has a brother, pretty big revelation. And Sam is a huge character in the game. He's a driving force in terms of the story, you know, kicks things off. And, you know, he's also responsible for one of the biggest U-turns uh, in the game when, when you find out that, 
the story he tells Nate, the reason that he needs to find this treasure because he's basically basically been given a death notice by uh you know some panamanian uh drug lord uh is that um is is all bullshit you know he he made this up you know he he's he's not in fact in debt to you know some uh, what's the guy's name's Al- alcazar alcazar i think it was hector alcazar alcazar yeah alcazar's dead and you know it's all been bullshit the whole time it's just that sam knew he'd never be able to do it without nate and he never and he knew he'd never get nate away from his normal life unless he thought it was a life and death situation. Uh, so Sam's like fascinating, a really complex character. There's parts of the game where I really like him and parts where I really hate him. Yeah. I thought, uh, I, you know, when they first said Sam and Sam, Nate has a brother um, back when they, they first sort of revealed that I, I was uh, not excited about it at all. Skeptical. And I thought it would be terrible. And I heard Troy Baker was doing it and I thought, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I really, really liked Sam as a character. I see, I have seen people um, in our own chat. I've seen people on other uh, um, websites talk about how they didn't like Sam as a character. I really liked Sam as a character. I thought both as a kid and as an adult, uh, I thought it was very well acted. I really liked the relationship between the two of them. You definitely could tell that Sam was the older brother, um, but they were different enough and, I, I thought the relationship was great. I thought Troy Baker did a phenomenal job uh, voice acting. There's not a weak uh, link in this cast, but to have Troy Baker and Nolan North playing scenes opposite each other is pretty special. It was th- He was fantastic. And I, I, I thought Sam was an excellent addition to this game. And by the end of it, I would play a game that was a Sam game. Um, I would love to have a game that has the two of them in it again. I really... I, I thought he brought a lot to the series, and I thought he, the character was very well written. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, when I, when you get to the end of the game, there's that whole moment, you know, Nate and Elena go back to their lives, and Sam and Sully are kind of left, you know, standing on on the dock next to the uh, next to the uh, the seaplane, I guess. And um, there's this whole kind of acknowledgement that you know, hey, you know, I we're both still kind of on just the wrong side of the law. Like we're pretty, we're pretty much upstanding people, but we're just standing on this side of that letter of the law. And, uh, you know, maybe we should go get into, uh, maybe go get into some stuff. And, and I said like, right then I was like, like this is the next game right here. It's fucking Sully and Sam, you know, the, the adventure continues with these guys, because I think that Sam stands strong enough as a character. And certainly Sully does. I mean, Sully is easily my favorite character in, in all these games. I fucking love Victor Sullivan and basically want nothing more than to become him as, uh, as I get old in life. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I mean, so that, I loved that, that uh, um, they clearly, you know, somebody in our, our comments wrote uh, DLC bait is obvious, right? Yeah, baby. Uh, and and clearly, although I have to I say I'm shit. very, so the, they're doing the first, we'll talk about this. They're doing the first single player DC DLC. And I'm very curious to see if it's Sully and Sam, yeah. or I think it would be super interesting if it was uh, Cassandra as well. Uh, Nate and Elena's daughter, but yeah, I'm, um, I'm down for that also. Yeah. So, so, um, but I, of course you're like, okay, so, uh, Great, we'll have Sully and Sam games. That's fine. I can do that too. That's totally fine. Yeah, I'll take um, it. whatever they want to give me. I'll take it. And I certainly didn't get the sense like you know we all th- they've said this is the last Uncharted. Um, you know, a thief's end. We all assumed was meant Nate. A thief's end meant Nate. Yeah, it easily could you know be referred to, and that's this is probably the whole point of the title is it could easily be referring to Avery as well and to yeah, and yeah, definitely. all those pirates and so. Um, I, I would not be the least bit surprised if there was something else in this universe, obviously. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I loved that scene where, where the two of them were talking and hanging out. And they, they would make a perfect series, uh, perfect uh, game series of its own. Yeah, I, I really – I thought Sam was a good character. I did, think, I did think we sort of got over the fact that he lied about Alizar a little too quickly. Um, that, that's a pretty big lie. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, but it, it's a huge lie. And it's, I, I think, I think the way that they kind of approach it, which is smart is basically, you know, they say, yeah, it's, it's a huge lie that he told. And Nate's no, no doubt, you know, really pissed about it, but it's not a big enough lie to, you know, leave his brother for dead with Rafe and, uh, and Nadine. So, right. He's got to, you know, he's, he's got to save him. He's got to save him. That that part's not in question, uh, and then you know the, the rest of it. You just have to imagine that you know time 
healed those wounds as it does all. Yep. So, Brent, I want to talk a little bit about pacing and length yeah. of the game. Uh, this, I thought it was about perfect, personally. So this is where I ran into problems with the game. Uh, the game was, for me, it was about 15 hours long. Okay. Was that, I don't know if it was about the same for you or yeah, not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to go back and kind of tally up my, uh, my playthrough total. Yeah, so it was about 15 hours long for me. Um, and where I, where I struggle a little bit with the game, you know, I think N- Naughty Dog has a tendency to do this uh, in all of their games, The Last of Us and all of the previous Uncharted. I, I feel like they're so like uh, proud of the work that they're doing that they, they, they put more in there than they perhaps need to. And, and, and the first place in the game where I began to sort of feel like the pacing maybe wasn't working perfectly was in Chapter 8, The Grave of Henry Avery. Yeah. Uh, it's when you go to Scotland. Um, right. And I, I feel like there was um, so many of the chapters were so compelling uh, that there was there was probably like a couple hours could have been trimmed out in the middle of the sort of generalized adventuring. Yeah. Uh, not, not that I don't want the adventuring and that I want all of these like uh, backstory scenes or whatever, but uh, there were times that I just felt like it wasn't compelling. And, um, you know, the first time you drive the Jeep. Um, yeah. I, I didn't feel like it was overly, com- yeah, I mean, it was absolutely fucking beautiful. And I, and I wish oh, there yeah. would have been more Jeep, but, um, there wasn't a lot of Jeep and that particular level wasn't very compelling. The Scotland level I felt was just like, Oh, Nate, you know, traversing stuff. Uh, and we'll talk about mechanics, but you know, just traversing and talking. And I, one of the things I did, you know, when, when we're talking about writing, one of the things I did feel this game was a little bit, had a little bit less of, um, although it didn't bother me was humor. I thought it wasn't quite as funny as Uncharted Two. Um, no. It was more sen- sentimental, and I and I really enjoyed it, that. It's, but it's got its it's got its moments. But yeah, it absolutely does. But it, it's that funniness that I think that banter that um, s- makes the the sort of more repetitive parts a little more palatable. Yeah. Um, and as there was a little bit less of it, I just I felt like there was maybe a couple hours of just generalized adventuring. Uh, and climbing and whatever that could have been left well, out at this point. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take what you're saying into consideration here because you know I was saying like I kind of felt it was perfect, but in looking back on it, where I really had my worst moments with the game, it was in the Scotland area, and yeah. and I started to come out of it once they got to Madagascar, but there, I mean, starting with like the starting with the party that they go to, you know, where they're gonna steal the other. Uh, yeah, that one's in, in Italy, Saint right? Dismas, yeah, uh, in Italy. Yeah. Starting with that section, yep. Yep. I had this hurry up and let's get to it kind of thing going, and yep. and it it affected quite a bit of how I I reacted to it. it, it I'll talk about it. It's, it's kind of related to the mechanics, but at first, like I fucking hated the 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 new stealth aspect to the combat mm-hmm. because. It took time, and I just wanted to go. I was just like, I don't want to fucking sit here and sneak up and like break every neck of every guard in this goddamn Italian villa. It's like I just want to get yeah. into a goddamn. Sh- this is an Uncharted game. I want to get into a shootout and get to the next thing. And the game really, really didn't want you to do that. And so, you know, maybe you're right. M- maybe, maybe what was bugging me there. I mean, mechanics we'll talk about, but maybe it was pacing that was you know more sort of uh, wearing thin on me at that point. So, yeah, I, yeah, that you can know, be a valid point. One of our listeners, Leg, said in the comments that uh, Scotland felt like an Uncharted 2 level. Yeah. Uh, and Madagascar felt a lot more Uncharted 4 sort of, you know, Thief's Endy. And, uh, and then that's interesting. I would, la- I would be curious to think about that. Yeah, I just that, – that was – and you're right. The, um, uh, the, Italian, the Italian levels had uh, a little bit of that as well um, where I felt that. And yeah, it, where it was just felt like generalized climbing. And, you know, one of the things that was so cool about uncharted two, uh, and I, we didn't, I didn't put level design in the dock here, but one of the things that was so cool about, uh, uh, uncharted two was, was figuring out that you could climb on things that you didn't think you'd be able to climb on like signs and air conditioners and stuff. Um, and, and I didn't feel like I experienced that in uncharted four as much. And so the climbing, uh, well, and again, we'll talk about the mechanics, but it made those levels feel sort of, uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, a bit, a bit repetitive or whatever. And so yeah. I too also uh, struggled with the stealth at first, but I think that, uh, that, that uh, the stealth actually ended up being something that was really interesting. And I wish they would have uh, maybe even flushed out a little bit more. It was interesting in certain areas of the game. Like I thought it worked better in certain places than it did in other. Yeah. Um, but 
again, you know, that, that as I'm thinking about it now, I've, I've kind of had this epiphany that maybe it was more, more down to pacing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the cutscenes. Uh, in addition to the story, which cutscenes were there cutscenes? It's so hard to tell the difference right. <laughs> in Uncharted. In addition to the story, which we, which we agree that the the story, the writing in the game is is second to none. The performance capture in this game was like awe inspiring. I could not. I mean, and even though it, I mean, it looks like really high end current gen video game graphics. It's not as though you get into those cutscenes and suddenly it's you know, photorealistic, uh, you know, like live action stuff. It's not that, but the fidelity of the performance capture was so amazing that uh, I just, I just felt so engrossed by what was going on. I mean, every single thing, you know, the little conversation uh, between Nate and Elena on the couch back in chapter four, you know, all the stuff going down with Sam and, and Nate while they're, while they're on Libertalia, uh, that scene where they come back to the hotel after the big chase scene and Elena's there and Nate burns all the bridges. Um, I, I mean, like the pain in Sully's face when, you know, Nate essentially gives him the you're no good to me anymore, old man speech and says, if you want to help, go, you know, go watch, you know, go guard the fort, go, you know, go watch the woman, go watch Elena. The. The, the the pain in Sully's face in that scene is just it's remarkable. I mean, it's amazing how much of the the performance uh, comes through uh, in in those cutscenes. Yeah, there's no question when watching this stuff that I mean, it's it's as compelling to me as any film. Oh yeah, easy. I've seen. Easy. I mean, it's it's it is. It's 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 absolutely amazing. And we're you know we have a, a, a specific sort of ta- some talk about art and graphics and that sort of thing, but it's I mean it's abs- the performance capture is it's astounding, and when coupled with good writing and and phenomenal acting, I mean it's just, it, it's just it, it's it's incredible. And I was, I mean uh, I was just compelled to come home to see it every day. You know, um, I see Aussie Legend in chat talking about uh, the uh, about Quantum Break. And I and I've not played Quantum Breaks, uh, so I don't have that uh, that point of comparison. Although certainly based on what I've seen, it does look good. Um, but um, it, it it really what's the comparison there? Uh, the, he, for he like the performance about, yeah, capture, yeah, like the graphic fidelity, and you know the yep. performance capture and everything. But um, the game the game is gorgeous all around. I mean, as you've pointed out in the past, now that uh, you know now that that graphics have reached a level where they can really do that kind of wet uh specular highlight look everything everything gets wetted down now so that they can show that off and uncharted it's certainly true but i mean my god the game is gorgeous i mean i i i can't think of i can't think of a better showcase for where console hardware is right now than this game oh absolutely not and even compared to so i mean we'll just jump into this uh, you know even compared to uh uh, PC, some PC games that I'm that I've played. I mean, this it, it is. I'm not saying it's like the crispness and resolution is is there uh, relative to PC or whatever, but it 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 it, uh, it is as compelling visually as as uh, most games I've ever played. I mean, there there were many many. I took just ridiculous amounts of pictures, um, and uh, you know. There were there were many times throughout the playing the game where I just sort of stopped and you know the the scene there's a oh what is it I, I wrote down some of the chapters here there's the chapter at sea where you're like in, in the boats there's for those of you that went for the dolphin trophy it's where you're like boating around those little tiny islands and there's dolphins out there and yeah. you end up going inside of an island jump out that was like colossally beautiful when you, when you walk into the to the hallway of um, Avery's that do you remember that like gold hallway uh, in Avery's castle or home oh yeah totally is, is like astonishingly beautiful i thought libertalia was like incredibly rendered um there were just so many moments in the game um that where, where i stopped and i was just astounded at the quality of what we were looking at i mean it really is it was just just i mean uh, one of the most beautiful games i've i've ever played at this point yeah it, it, you, it really was i mean it, it was just across all the different uh across all the different locations that we explored i mean you know scotland's not that beautiful but that's not the game's fault um 
But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. And there's an island that won't be listening to our uh, show. Anymore. You know, that's my people right there. I thought I was but, amazed at like at how beautiful um, uh, Madagascar. It was Madagascar is where we ended up, right? Incredible. I mean, I, and I, I had seen tons of rend, you know renders of it in in uh, um, in, in PR stuff that had come out before, and it's yeah. not like we haven't played in jungles before. And I, just the whole time I was there, I was a I mean, after playing the game for for ten hours or twelve hours, I was like, "This game it can't surprise me with its beauty anymore." And it was just astonishing. Wrong, wrong. I mean, I mean, absolutely it's astonishing. What we're talking about now? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, just incredible. It was phenomenal. And the art direction was 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 um, Pure, uh, top notch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it absolutely was. The different environments that we got to see it brought back some of the you know there's some homage to Uncharted Two with the with the uh, marketplace and and that sort of thing, and yep. uh, the 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 was a chapter what was it thirteen marooned that rainstorm yeah that that was when you wake up on the nice. beach phenomenally beautiful um, the the difference in the color palette and design around when you're playing young young uh, Sam and Nate um, mm-hmm. I mean just uh, just all around the art direction was uh, as you said it was peerless I mean it was flawless it, it was really interesting also how certain aspects of the game recalled. Certain certain things from from the last games. I mean, certainly you know the part in Madagascar, um, you know, brings to mind some of the things going on in the desert in Uncharted Three, and and certainly once you get to Libertalia, that lush green island, with the you know with this sunken city, uh, it, it's hard to not you know kind of think back to the first game and and looking for El Dorado. Um, those those were kind of maybe not maybe they weren't overtly intentional, but. It was interesting how some aspects of this game end up kind of becoming a, a almost a greatest hits collection on you know all these amazing things that Un- Uncharted has done before these locales that they visited and so forth. But I still felt like it was fresh. I mean, I still felt totally. I didn't feel like it. It was just them no, redoing. It doesn't feel repetitive at all, especially yeah. with especially with regards to the design of Libertalia. I mean, on some level, like you play this game and you're like, how has this series existed for as long as it has? And they've never done a fucking pirate treasure hunt you know uh because it seems just such an obvious uh an obvious place to go sure with this series but uh it, it has its own it really has its own identity as opposed to you know the stuff in el dorado or shambhala etc hey brent i want to go back for just a second uh and talk if i may about the pacing and the length and that sort of thing because sure. i think it's 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 maybe the place to do this and i had uh, there were a couple listeners who asked um you know, if during the postmortem we could do some comparing and contrasting with uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Oh, right. Uh, which did you you played right? Uh, yeah, I, I played. Well, no, 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 no. Now, Rise of the Tomb Raider is the second one. I I only played like the first, like the reboot Tomb Raider. Oh, okay. So you played, haven't played Rise of the Tomb Raider. I've not played the second one yet. No. So I, it's a phenomenal game and 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 better than the first one. Uh, um, and so I do want to talk about a little bit of uh, if we can in terms of comparing and contrasting, and then talk about specifically. Uh, um, a Thief's End and some of the pacing. One of the things that both games uh, really got me with in the pacing was they both felt like they were going to end long before they ended. Right. Um, and I don't know if you got that. I mean, especially with Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, very, very much so I thought, oh, the game's about to end. And there was another, like, 90 minutes or something like that. Okay. And I felt a little bit like that in uh, uh, in Uncharted also, like, once we, especially once we got to Libertalia. Um, right. Uh, you know, I, I was like, oh, you know, the game is probably... And, and I remember feeling this way about all of the previous Uncharted's as well. Um, uh, that, like... And, and I, was, I wasn't I was like thinking... they went on too long, or is it just that your sort of expectations got maybe a little bit... Uh, maybe the game messed with your expectations a little bit, because, like, just as you think things are winding down, you know, suddenly you hit, like, the Nazi zombie part of the game. Right, and uh, well, a little bit of both. Going. A little bit of both. I think... I think but I, but I think it did go on a little too long. I mean, I think it was, it's like, uh, and I remember specifically, uh, was it Uncharted One when you're fighting the army, um, the big, the big bald dude? I can't remember his name. That's three, uh, I think. I want to say Dragorovich or whatever that's, the fuck that's, his that's, name was. That's three. No, I don't think it was three. I can't remember. But um, well, if it's the guy that I'm thinking of, it's three. Yeah, I might be thinking of someone different, but. Um, but uh, no, I think it goes on a little bit too long, and it's made to feel even that much longer because of the little extra bits in the middle that probably didn't need to be there that we talked about. Yeah. Um, 
Um, but yeah, like you get to Libertalia and you think, okay, we're getting close. And then it's just like, oh, one more house, one more pirate, one more, you know, like, one, oh, really? One more okay. cave system, one more booby trap. That's right. One and, more and, cave uh, filled with gunpowder mummies. I just wanted to bring that up because I think both this and uh, Tomb Raider both suffered greatly from that. I don't know. Um, I'm of two minds on that. I mean, it's, you know, the way that I played, I played in like, you know, two hour sessions. So, you know, like I never kind of like sat there and just felt like, oh God, this is going on too long. You know, like I was always like, I wish I could play for three hours, but I just can't. Um, But I, I don't know. Like, it's hard for me to like say, like, it's hard for me to fault this game for giving me so much to play. And and the thing is like, even, the, I mean, even though you're right in terms of kind of the storytelling, I can I can agree with you and say yeah it it feels like it's winding up to this logical stopping point and then it doesn't but I found the gameplay in that part of the game so fun that I just can't be too angry that it didn't matter it. right yeah so real quick uh our the uh huddled masses have made very clear to me that it was Lazarevich and it was uncharted 2 uh, uh was was, was the Lazar- one I was thinking was Lazarevich and uncharted 2 Yes, I think so. Which, which uh, and then, was the one? And, and then someone called us a fake for not knowing that. Yeah, well, they're not wrong. <laughs> that was probably Esteban that did that. We should fire him. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, um, my the one one last thing I want to say because I know that we need to move on to mechanics. We can't yeah. sit here all night. But one thing I want to say real fast is that, um, or, or I, I guess I just want to ask the question. One of the ways that this game really differs from from one and two, and you know, I'm kind of struggling to remember with with three. Actually, no, they don't. They don't do that in three, in because it's kind of explained uh, as you know, as you know, being under the influence of a uh, of a hallucinogenic. But this game does not do that whole thing that one and two do, where you get down to like that last little bit of the game, and suddenly the supernatural shit, you know, gets uh, unleashed. Uh, obviously, you know, the Nazi zombies in the first game. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull style? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and, I mean, to, to, a, to a lesser degree, you know, the, the other Raiders films. I mean, certainly there's supernatural aspects to Lost Ark and Last Crusade. Right, of course, yeah. But uh, this game did not do that. You know, they, 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 they stuck to just a more realistic kind of approach. And I'm just curious how you felt about that. Did you feel like anything was missing? Did you Did you get to the end and be like, oh, there's not real mummy pirates here, like, you know? No, I thought it was perfect. I actually prefer that, and we'll talk about in the mechanics. Um, uh, we'll talk about in the mechanics a, a little bit related to that sense of like the more realistic or whatever. Um, but no, I, I appreciate that, and I didn't. I didn't even notice that as a piece that was uh, missing. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree. I have to say that. Uh, I mean, people p- kind of pointed it out as I was playing, but I have to say that it, it, I didn't miss it in the least, and I, I felt like it would probably take away from what the game was really about, which was ultimately it was about human drama, betrayal, uh, you know, priorities, you know, like putting, you know, treasure above relationships and, you know, that, that kind of thing. I mean, you know, all those were sort of in play. Speaking of in play, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the game mechanics. This is going to be, oh my God. this is going to be the one part of the, this is going to be the one part of the discussion where, uh, where I can honestly say that the game disappointed me a bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it disapp- it didn't disappoint me because I didn't really have expectations. Um, I expected it to be an Uncharted game, and I, and I thought of of all of the Uncharted games, the Uncharted mechanics were at their best in this game. Um, you know, I really again, I really like the stealth. Where we, you know, as we were talking about this, we're watching footage of that level where um, you you kind of take on multiple levels, multiple guys, and I remember playing that level very well and. And using the the little leaves and stuff to hide, and I really liked the the addition of the stealth. I wish we would have been designed to do it more. Um, the the swinging rope thing, uh, the grapple or whatever, I you know that, but uh, that didn't seem to impact um, really a ton. It didn't seem to be much of an addition, in my opinion. No, I, it, it worked okay, but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was fine. It did what it was supposed to do, but I didn't it feel wasn't like a it stand out. I didn't feel like it made the game so much more exciting to play. Right. Uh, and the rest of the mechanics, I felt like uh, were, you know, just slightly better versions of all the Uncharted mechanics. I felt like for the most uh, for the most part, I agree with that. But but then there's the shooting, which I really felt took a step back in this game. I, oh really? I Why? The shooting in this was clunky. I thought that the well, 
the the best I think maybe the best example I can give you is this is a, okay this is 2016 this is a game on the PlayStation 4 and yet I'm like behind a crate shooting at some guys a dude comes running up beside me to grab me and I'm aiming slower than he's running like you know like I'm panning to the left to get him you know to get him in in the crosshairs but he's running faster than the camera can move and it's like we we like that was fixed last generation. Like you know, like how is this still a problem? I mean, that's that's like PlayStation Two era, you know, clunky trying to play shooters on consoles stuff. And I thought that uh, I thought that it was way too easy to get stuck to things when you didn't want to be in cover. You had to get like right up on something to get into cover. Like you couldn't kind of be like running towards it and hit the cover button and and get to it. You had to like be right the fuck on it. Um, I thought that there were way too many times where I'm trying to like roll off of a, you know, like roll off of a ledge or something like that to get away. And I end up going into cover on a, on a barrel or something that's, you know, like, uh, you know, next to me or whatever. It just, I, I did not think that the combat in this game held up as well as it did in two and three. I thought that, uh, I thought that they were, uh, they were superior with that. It's not that it was. I, I'm, I don't. I don't think that it felt as frustrating as the combat in Uncharted One uh, got to be at times. Uh, but there was definitely some some bullet spongy enemies. Uh, you know, like they, they tr- you know they try to kind of do the thing from from two. You know, where you got guys in heavy armor and that kind of thing. But there there was still some some moments where it's like, okay, this is three headshots now. This guy needs to be dead soon. You know that's interesting because I, I just I didn't have that experience at all. I mean, it was, I definitely had the uncharted experience where I started the game, and for a little bit I was like, "Oh, that's right, this is uncharted." Like it's not, it's not. And I play most of my shooters I play on the PC, but even yeah. so, I, I you know, um, it, it took me some getting used to. But I, I didn't feel I, I I didn't feel like this was any worse, and I felt like it was, you know, slightly marginally better. But it, but it it you know it. And I didn't have any of the issues you had with rolling and cover. Like that wasn't a problem for me. I don't remember well, that being an issue at all. I'm perfectly willing. I'm perfectly willing to admit that you know I've not played a, a shooter on the console since since uh, Metal Gear Solid Five last fall. And you know I've been playing the Division on PC, and you know maybe I'm just expecting too much of it, having you know played like a third person cover based shooter so recently, but with mouse and keyboard, and I'm just expecting too much of you know what uh, what the game. Uh, is going to offer, but is going to offer. Yeah. So but when I, one when of I was things- playing the game and I was talking about, it, I was like, man, this feels like really clunky to me. I had, there were numerous people in chat and maybe they were placating me, but there were numerous people in chat that, that voiced similar opinions. They were saying like, yeah, like the, the gunplay doesn't, it doesn't feel particularly solid. No, I mean, but, but I, and I don't disagree with that statement. It just doesn't feel any worse to me. I got you. Um, but, uh, but Uncharted has always had, you know, kind of crappy gunplay. And, yeah. you know, one of the things, awesome. so it's interesting when you look at this game, I'm playing Doom right now on PC, right. which is like all gameplay, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, and it's really good shooter gameplay and, and zero story, basically. And, uh, <laughs> it's sort of, it's, it's sort of the antithesis of this, but, um, you know, when, you know, as, as I was thinking as we were preparing, you know, for, for this postmortem, this idea, everybody's always, you know, everyone knows that uncharted shooting is is mediocre at best. It's okay or whatever. And, yeah. I, you know, I, I I think, and I think I was thinking about Tomb Raider, and which which was definitely better uh, from a shooting standpoint. Although to be fair, I did play it on the PC, um, but uh, it was absolutely better. And you have like bows and arrows and different kinds of weapons. But I started thinking about like this as compared to say Indiana Jones or whatever, and what it would look like. If you just took the shooting out of this game, you know, in Indiana Jones, there's not, and instead of shooting, you focused on the stealth aspects and and a really solid hand to hand combat system. Not not like Batman, where I, I don't think that system is the right one, but some version for Uncharted of a really uh, a, a really solid Uncharted like hand to hand combat system. So it would feel more like, say, an Indiana Jones movie, where Indiana Jones isn't shooting up the entire world, right? Um, I don't know. It was just something well, the I, I was sort a six of six shooter, you know, right? And and he doesn't use it that but often. It says pretty, and usually, usually he drops it. That's right. Yeah, yes, usually he drops it. <laughs> it gets taken away from him, or you know, something. That's exactly <laughs> right. And so I, I don't know. I'm just curious, like what what an Uncharted game would look like without the shooting. There was significantly less shooting in this game than any of the previous three. Yes, I, that I agree with. And just just to kind of finish up my rant on on the mechanics of this game, although I. I 
alluded to this a little bit earlier with, with regards to the pacing, but the stealth mechanics really came at, at the wrong moment for me. Uh, where it really frustrated me was in that, uh, you know, when you get to Scotland and you're trying to get to the, uh, you're trying to get to the graveyard while Rafe and his crew are over, you know, blowing up the monastery looking for right. the, uh, looking for the treasure at that point since they think it's there. But, um, you get into that, uh, you get into that first like little section, you know, there's kind of like a, you know, like an excavation going on and, uh, you know, some guys come in and you've got to, um, you you got to take them out. And I was playing through that and like the game was explaining how the stealth stuff worked. And I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I don't care. Like I want to get to the next thing. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to shoot these assholes. Cause that's going to be faster. Uh, famous last words. <laughs> And it just, I found myself so frustrated. You like the, and pe- people are talking to me in chat and they're saying, well, you know, like the stealth is optional. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to stealth them. And I'm like, okay, no, fine. So like, you know, like I open up on them and then like all of a sudden there's like a guy right beside me shooting me in the head and I'm dead. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I didn't see him. So like I restart again, you know, come back into it. I do the same thing, you know, like I, I, I light them up and then all of a sudden there's like two guys behind me shooting me i'm like what the fuck is this and they're like oh yeah if you break stealth the game like instantly flanks you i'm like what and i i managed to like at one point you could see in my stream like i like i i basically i trigger it and then like i go running for like this you know this this uh out of the way spot on the map and like you pan over and like the rock you just jumped over coming in suddenly like three guys come hopping over that same rock i'm like where the fuck were you 10 seconds ago and just like that whole kind of thing where like the game like magically like just they, they just teleport in. The game just invents bad guys to flank you as a way of punishing you for trying to play like a fucking uncharted game, which is to say a fucking shootout. That's what this fucking games are about on some level is getting into a goddamn shootout. And the fact that Uncharted 4 was punishing me for trying to play an uncharted game made me a little bit crazy. So I never had that experience, I guess, because I think I did the stealth or whatever. I mean, every no, that's, that's the point. Every, is that the game, it's it's like do what we say or else. Yeah, no, that seems weird. But and I didn't. I, I, I agree did with you. That like seems it. very weird. It, it, like I, I almost can, stopped playing the game. I almost stopped playing the game after day three because I was so angry about it. I can understand. I can understand why that would be frustrating. Having said that, uh, by the time you get to that big epic fight in the jungle with you, you know that uh, that was multiple the one they showed in all the like exactly, gameplay in videos, all those demos. Like by the time I got to that, I loved it. Like I really was just like, okay, I'm I'm going to give up and I'm just going to play the game the way it wants me to play it. I'm going to like put my expectations aside, and I had a really great time with it. And I imagine if I had done that early on, I probably would have been fine with it too. But as I said, I didn't want to do that early on. I wanted to get right, and you got it. and you got punished for it. Yeah, yeah. And th- so I, I it did felt. do it, and, and it I just and I thought it worked great, and I loved it. And so I loved like that that exact level you're talking about. Yeah, I still threw like ninety percent of it, and I absolutely loved it. And so it, 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 it yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I, I I didn't I didn't have that experience at all. And one experience like that can fundamentally change sort of how you feel about the game for hours, it did. You know, or I mean, even permanently. It did. I mean, it really. Yep. It took a lot for me to get over that. I mean, I was playing, like, I was texting with Esteban. He's like, oh, you should get back on today and try this and try that. Like, you know, trying to be all helpful after he'd been such a bastard, uh, you know, the day before. Uh, <laughs> and um, and I just told him, I was like, look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I was like, but honestly, I don't give a fuck about this game. I was like, I don't know that I'm going to play it anymore. It, you know, it's pretty much dead to me. And I'm, gl- so Brent, I'm glad look- I didn't stick with that because it ended up being such a great experience by the time I got to the end. It is. I was it's, discouraged. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that sucks, dude. So there, there's a couple pieces that that discouraged me I want to talk about that I thought were just poor design choices. Number one is, I don't I don't know if you caught this, but there seemed to be just a, a, a metric truckload of uh, m- more times that you were sliding down mud chutes and stuff. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of that in this game, and to the point that I felt like it was excessive, and not just like not just the amount, but there were multiple times where you had to essentially take a left turn 90 degree angle across the mud chute. Yeah. <laughs> Which just physics wise didn't even make sense to me, and I thought that was really, really stupid. Um, and then one other thing that really annoyed me in this game, and we were just watching footage of it uh, on the live stream, is uh, the m- frequency with which they did this stupid mechanic of um, pull a crate. Let me look for. I can't get up there. Let me figure out a way to do it. Oh, let me go find a crate and pull it over here for me to jump on. Thank God the pirates built all these crates with casters on the bottom. 
And it just seems so like just so ridiculous when it was it was like, okay, where's the crate? Oh, there's the crate. I have to push it off the ledge and a blah 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 blah. Yeah. And it just seemed like a colossal like waste of time. So uh that really annoyed me and I thought was way overdone in the game. Um so those were a couple mechanics that bothered me. The driving, um, you know, the Jeep I thought was a lot of fun to drive and gorgeous and yeah. Um, it just didn't feel like the, it, it only felt compelling the second time you had to drive it, like in the chase down the hill, which we had all seen, uh, I could have done footage. with more of that. That was a very, that was a very, very exciting, uh, bit of the game, but I agree the, the, the biggest, but the initial time I didn't think was like all that interesting or exciting. It was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that was all about the landscape as far as I, I mean, that's the only thing I remember from it. Although I do, uh, again, from a mechanic standpoint, one of the things that got on my last fucking nerve with the jeep was the winch the 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 control to grab the winch uh cable and and you know go like hook it onto something to pull the jeep up a hill right like where you actually walk it around the tree it's and the same button to get in and out of the jeep it's just based on whether you're close to the winch or not it's it's triangle oh when you're taking it off of the jeep I to begin with you mean not fucking tell you how many times <laughs> i get out of the jeep walk around to the front hit the triangle button but I'm not standing where the game wants me to be. And so Nate climbs up on the hood and hops back into the driver's seat instead of that- grabbing the winch cable. I <laughs> like to break my fucking TV. It made me so fun. I was like, why could that- you just make this another goddamn button? That did not happen to me oh, once, not one time God, in the it's entire so game. Frustrating. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's a, it's so funny how you could have such a different experience with something like that. And it never happened to me one yeah. time. And I'm sure just, it made you want to just pull your fucking yeah, hair out. So, anyway, that's so funny. That's my abiding memory of the fucking Jeep. Also, since we're kind of since we're, since AI is kind of part of this section, I also would just like to compliment uh, all of the bad guys in this game who uh, who carry grenades for having the best fucking aim of any computer controlled enemy with grenades I've ever experienced. I mean, I've been playing the Division, and sometimes those fuckers miss. Not in Uncharted. Not in Uncharted. <laughs> that's right. I mean, so. So uh, one of the other mechanics I just want to touch on briefly, Brent, because it was sort of a, a pivotal scene in the game, was is quick time. Uh, there's not a ton of quick time in the yeah, game, but a little it was bit a of big scene. Mash the triangle button, you know. Well, there's a big scene though. Yes, there's that shit, which I don't even think of that as quick time. I just think of that as stupid button mashing mechanic, but which I guess is what quick time is. But yeah. uh, I, I don't tend to be. I, I think quick time is a legitimate mechanic. It's just a different way of like, uh, um, you know, utilizing the input or whatever. Yeah. And so I was thinking about the sword fight with Rafe. Yeah, that that ends the game. How did how, how did you feel about it? I'm curious. I uh, honestly, I actually enjoyed it. it didn't bother me too it, much. It, I got frustrated once or twice. It didn't bother me. I mean, I, I I can't remember if I got through it. I can't remember if I died once and had to restart, or if I just, you know, if, like if I just went down and you know, like it kind of, I, I had to sort of, you know, because it it would it wouldn't quite like restart. But right, there were levels, the level, of- but it would kind of like it would like knock you back. You know, maybe like sort of two notches from where you were. Oh no, I, I died a couple of times. I can't remember if that. I died or not, but I don't know. I guess that I kind of felt I felt pretty good about it. I mean, as far as I was concerned, you get to that part of the game, you're ready for it to be over. I, I don't think that I would have cared for some sort of, you know, like big elaborate shootout with this, you know, with with this character. It felt personal, you know, it being a sword fight as opposed to a shootout. It felt personal. It felt like Rafe, due to the fact that obviously he, you know, he was a fencer. Uh, Rafe would actually stand a chance against Drake, you know, in that circumstance. So I think it worked. Yeah, I did too. Actually, but I. That's not to say I, I look didn't... back on it as like the highlight of the game. No, not at all. But I thought it was. A, I thought it was a, a well done thing, and I. And I... Certainly, when it started out, I was like, "Are we gonna? We're gonna? Are we? Oh, we're pick. Oh, it's on. Oh, we're picking up the swords now, yeah, baby." Um, and I, mean, it's I, a pirate I thought they, game. it's got to end with a fucking sword fight on a pirate. Yeah, I ship, thought right? it was good, man. I, I know there are people are like, you know, so many people are so conditioned to just go, quick time is bullshit. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't feel that way. I no. definitely got frustrated a couple times because I was struggling. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I like, I mean, to me, you know, to me, it's, a, it's, I know that it's nothing mechanically like the, the Batman Arkham fight system, but. In terms of the philosophy of it, the idea that it you know you've basically got an attack button and then you've got sort of a block left block right i I, I dig that like I, I dig when you know the game actually kind of like leaves you the leaves you the responsibility to you know sort of defend yourself 
as opposed to just, you know, oh, I'll just dodge out of the way. Uh, right. you know, I'll, I'll just roll away from it or, you know, whatever. I, I, I think, I think, I think it was tuned pretty, uh, pretty well. Dude, I'm telling you, imagine again, not Batman, but imagine like the game instead of all these shootouts had, had mixed the stealth mechanic with a well-designed, like sort of more brawler style fist fight where you had to defend yourself. Yeah. So you, your, your responsibility as Nate, the adventurer is to, to get around the guys with weapons. Don't let them shoot you. And then when you get to them, you get into a, a real sort of back and forth fist fight with them. Um, I, I don't know. I think it would be interesting, but so mechanics, um, you know, I think, you know, the weak part of uncharted, uh, but, but were for me sort of in line with what my expectations were. So, right. um, let's talk Fair a little point. bit about some of the overall design, Brent, sure. things like, uh, puzzles, achievements, treasures, uh, any, you know, Easter eggs, that sort of thing, uh, RPG elements or lack thereof, uh, in terms of upgrading weapons and stuff like that. Um, what did you think of the overall design of the game? Um, let's start with the puzzles. What did you think of the puzzles in this game? Uh, I thought that the design of the puzzles and kind of the logic of them was pretty impressive. I, 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 on the whole, I really enjoyed them, but I did think that they were a little bit on the easy side. I thought they could have been a bit more challenging. Yeah, and I would say that that's actually a little bit true. Um, with other parts of the design as well. Like I, I, you know, it's really frustrating to me, the whole, Oh, there's the white line. That's where the handhold is when you're platforming. Yeah. Um, uh, and I don't recall that there's an option to turn that off. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like some of the design is, is meant to be easy like that. I thought I would have liked more puzzles. I always, uh, want more puzzles. Although I don't think the puzzles in the uncharted series are as good as the puzzles in the new rise of the tomb Raider, the challenge tombs I thought were more, uh, interesting and challenging than than many of the puzzles in Uncharted, but I did I did like the puzzles in this game, and I preferred them. I, you know, I didn't have like a major annoying puzzle the way I felt like I did in each of the first three games of the Uncharted series. I I, I think again, I think one of the reasons that two is the standout is I think that two had the best. I think two had the best puzzles. I think I had the most fun with the puzzles in two. Um, but um, I just. I, like I said, I mean, I, I loved. I think I think my favorite is the puzzle in Madagascar in the uh, you know in the basement of of the tower that uh, Nate and Sully go to, and you are finding the you're finding the uh, kind of you know the hidden image in those paintings of the captains, the founders, right. yeah. And then you're yep. coming back over to that wheel and you're kind of figuring out how to match them up, how to you know rotate those those sigils and get the the hash marks to line up. Uh, so you can lock them in and and proceed. That one was my favorite, I, I think, from the game. I, I I thought that it 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 was the most challenging, um, and I thought that it was just it was just the most fun to figure out. I agree. The, the one in the the one in the Scotland tomb where you have to uh, you have to like kind of twist the dials to get the the shafts of light to you know rotate yep. and then strike those stones in the door. Yep. That one was. I mean, it was just. It was it was fine. I mean, it was clever. It was a neat it was a neat design and everything. It just but it was it was so easy, very easy that it just yeah. didn't really it didn't really warrant much. Uh, You're talking about the dials on the on the like wall, right on the door, yeah. right? So there was the other one where you turn the big like rings around the room. Uh, that that remember that, that one, one? Yeah, that one was cool. I, I did like that one. I, I thought so too. It turned out to be a little easier than I would have liked. It, it, um, but agreed. I, like, like that's the thing. It was a cool design. Like the logic of it was cool, but I don't, I don't think it was particularly challenging. Yeah. Uh, so I would have liked. I definitely would have liked to have seen uh, more puzzles. I, I too really liked the one you're referring to. By the way, the one that you were talking about in the basement with all the pirate pictures. Did you know that one of those pictures is a direct reference to uh, Monkey Island? Um, no, the, I guess the pirate I, I didn't. I, I've never played Monkey Island, but I have since looked I, up I've some of the Monkey Easter Island, eggs, which is why I'm horrified that I didn't catch it. The pirate that there's one pirate out of all those paintings that has no name. Yeah. Uh, and he is a representation of who, who's the, is it, who's the main character of Monkey Island? Is it Threetwood or something like that? What's the, what's the, what's the character, the Monkey Island characters? I gotta, I gotta go back and I'm trying to find a picture of this. Uh, I'm trying to find like a screenshot of, uh, of the Thing whatever, here. whatever the guy's name, the main, the main dude, and I, I want to say Guy Threetwood. I don't know why I'm saying that. It's probably totally wrong. I have no idea who the, who, yeah, he's the character with the monkey sigil, uh, and Guybrush. <laughs> People, <laughs> Threepwood. <laughs> uh, everybody in chat is telling me Guybrush Threepwood. Yeah. 
Um, uh, he's he's he, he's the pirate right. in the painting that yeah, has okay. I, that has no name and has a monkey sigil. I, I never, I, I, I did not, uh, I did not even, I did not even. Get yeah, that. I, I mean, I, I never would have, I never would have uh, made the reference because uh, I didn't play Monkey Island, but I did. Uh, there's a couple Monkey Island very references. Long time ago. That's one of them. There's a line in the game where he says, "That's the second biggest cistern I've ever seen." Yep. That's a reference to a line out of, out of uh, Monkey, Monkey Island. Island when he says, "That's the second biggest skull I've ever seen." Right. Uh, apparently that's a running joke yeah. in the uh, yeah. in the whole Uncharted series. I didn't know that, but so that's anyway, cool. that's very cool. Guybrush Threepwood. That's good to know. So, uh, so that's the puzzles. Achievements. I didn't really pay my, a ton of attention to Brent, except I was really excited. I don't know if you knew this achievement was in there, but do you, do, were you aware of the Scared Stiff achievement? No. There's a, the Scared Stiff achievement. So you remember, of course, uh, at E3. When they started to demo the gameplay in the marketplace at the beginning of the demo, yeah, and, and, and uh, it, it like crashed on them or whatever. Right, it was a controller malfunction. Uh, so if you in that scene in the video in the game of Uncharted Four, if when it when it you're looking down, you say, "I think that's Sam down there," and then you gain control of Nate again. Right. If you just stand there for thirty seconds and don't do anything, you get an achievement called Scared Stiff. Nice. Which is supposed to be a recreation of uh, nice. of Nate not moving in the E3 one. There's so that was a cool one. There was also an achievement that I did get um, accidentally, where you buy you have to buy an apple from one of the apple vendors, yeah. and then you have to walk over and look at this dude who's got a I, lemur. I did that one. I did that one. And the lemur comes yeah. and grabs the apple from, from you. Yeah, yeah, so I got that one. Um, other than that, I haven't really uh, I haven't really um, dug into the game uh, in terms of um, achievements uh, beyond that. So. No, I have I haven't either, uh, and I don't know. I, I may get to it at some point. Obviously, I I achievement hoard the first game pretty uh, pretty seriously. Yeah. So um, Easter eggs there they are throughout the game. There's a, there's a couple Crash Bandicoot ones. I know there's some Monkey Island ones. Uh, I've watched a couple videos on some Easter eggs, right. uh, but I haven't really dug too far into those. The one thing that I'm always disappointed with Brent in the in the Uncharted games are the treasures. Um, you know you know what I'm talking yeah, about yeah, the shiny the like. Yeah, I just I, I find them to be so uh, not compelling. I just I, I never care. Yeah, I, I I can't say that I, I do with any great uh, any great frequency either. And I really wish that they had that they would do more with. I wish they would do more with um, that sort with Easter eggs, achievements, and those treasures to to, to make me want to explore in other places. Right. And they're just they're the the reward is not compelling in any way. Um, what, what do you get for collecting the treasures? I mean, do you, do you just, I don't think you get anything. I think you just get a, an achievement I, and, and the treasures themselves are not compelling. There's no story element to them. Right. There's no, like, there's just nothing. They don't turn into a puzzle. Like that would be cool if the treasures, like you piece together some sort of other puzzle that you had to do to, you know, yeah. like, I, I don't know. That might like um, you know, unlock the, something or there's a million things they could, they could do with it and yeah. they do nothing with it. And it just, it seems odd. Uh, I did not find the, the treasures especially compelling. Also, um, yeah. So I, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you on that point. Um, moving um, on. Yeah. What about the what about the single or excuse me? What about the multiplayer? Did you touch the multiplayer at all? I haven't messed with it a a, a bit. Oh, you haven't. Uh, you, I haven't um, touched it. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, I did. Um, uh, I played. I played. I actually watched quite a long stream on it before the game came out. And was really looking forward to playing it. I played about forty-five minutes of it when the game came out, and then I stopped uh, because I didn't want to ruin anything uh, uh, for the single player. And I went back and, and played it some more. And uh, I actually really enjoyed it. There's a new system. They have sidekicks in the game now. You can buy one of four sidekicks: a tank, a healer, a sniper, um, or uh, uh, you can use it to buy uh, weapons, like super-powered weapons. And so there's a purchasing system within the game. Right. Not that you can use real money to buy stuff, but that you earn money throughout the game and you can use it to buy stuff within the game, sort of like counter-strike or something like that. Um, and, uh, what I've played so far, I quite enjoyed. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward, uh, uh, to getting, to checking out the multiplayer. I remember I didn't really play it in three. I played it a little bit. Um, I really enjoyed it in two. I played two and I, and I played three. I, I, I'm really hoping for some co-op type stuff. Um, I, I I think, I think uh, that would be quite a bit of fun. It would be, um, but I, I really enjoy multiplayer, and I would be totally love to get on and, and play with some folks from uh, from Outlaw Gamer Society and with you, Brent. I, I really enjoyed it, and I, and I think it has a lot of potential. Again, I just I haven't gotten into it and, and really dug deeply. 
So let's talk a little bit about what might come next. And, and I think, a, you know, a, a good thing to kind of like close on perhaps is, is the epilogue to the game because the epilogue is quite, it's quite interesting. Um, I, as, as satisfying as the game was from a story standpoint, the epilogue was, was even more so. Uh, I found myself, admittedly, I'm a sucker for this kind of thing in general. I, you know, good drama just uh, does it for me in general. But the fact that the good drama in this case was all to do with Nate and Elena's daughter was, was pretty special. Uh, and, and I really, really found myself enamored of that. And the, the the idea that you know what if what if they continue this game with you know the you know with the daughter like you know what if she you know grows up one day and has her own adventures you know whatever I mean they don't really they don't really other than just you know kind of introducing the character they don't really set that up at all but I'm just kind of curious I mean we joked earlier about like oh they should do you know like Sam and Sully and uh, you know some people say that you know that they uh, they they could do something with the daughter. Uh, but uh, where do you where do you think that it goes if if they're going to do DLC or something like that? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they, they obviously they've said they will be doing, and I can't wait for this, and I will absolutely be buying it. The first single play, piece of single player DLC yeah. um, for the Uncharted series, and and I, I my my guess is it's going to be a Sully uh, Sam thing, right. uh, but I think it would work awesomely as as a uh, a Cassandra thing, and I and I would love to Cassie, and I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see them do a game with Cassie. I would love to see them continue this series with Cassie. I think it would be fucking that brilliant suit, to do like that. That would suit me just fine. I just think it would be fucking amazing. And you could have, you could have, you know, Nate and Elena show up uh, in the game somewhere or, you know, uh, I, I just think it would be awesome. The epilogue to me was, you know, uh, it was just so powerful and moving and so awesome and completely unexpected uh, for me. Yep. Uh, I, I, I did not, I, 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 I never guessed it from a million miles away. And I, and I absolutely, I, I just, I absolutely love that scene. It's one of my favorites of all time in gaming. And, you know, it comes back to, I think one of the things you and I love the most about Red Dead, Brent, was that, uh, when, when, uh, uh, you know, Marston's son is the game, is the character you're playing and the, the relationship between the two. And there's something very powerful and palpable there. And I, I think it was really incredible. So I agree. I, I think that. Again, you're going back to, you know, we've talked about, you know, sort of the themes of the game, relationships, you know, family, all of these things that are that are strung throughout uh, Uncharted 4. That is, in, in a sense, it's the only it's the only place that it can end. You know, you you begin very early in the game seeing where Nathan Drake started in life. And I found myself really, really. Um, really engaged by seeing how Drake's child is about the same age in her own life and how different her life is and how, you know, Drake has like, like, you know, maybe the, the, the most, the most courageous and, and amazing thing that Drake has done in all his adventures is to, uh, is to be a good dad. You know, and that's something that obviously uh, has a lot of import for me these days. Uh, something that I, I strive for, but that that scene really connected with me um, powerfully. Just just because it's, I guess I can see myself in it more so than anything else that Nathan Drake does. Yeah, I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant, and 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 I also love separately the whole like going through the belongings. Oh yeah, no, that was that uh, was great fun from the last few games and, and the picture looking at the pictures. And by the way, I did want to mention, uh, I loved the part with, uh, Nate and, and Sam where they took the picture of themselves in the mansion. Right. And I had switched out a couple hats and the picture has whatever hat you were wearing and whatever, you know what yep. I mean? And I, I just, I, I love that, oh, that whole thing. And then bringing it back around while she's looking through the pictures and seeing them on their wedding. Yep. And I just, it was just, it was absolutely, absolutely, uh, fantastic. It, it felt like they really, the one thing that you can say about the game, I think, is that they really gave us, the fans, nice closure in this game. Like, you didn't get to the end of this game and feel like, you know, you'd been robbed. Like, you really felt like they'd closed the book, but uh, it, it was a it was a wholly worthwhile uh, journey to have gone on. 
Absolutely. And I think that that is uh, perhaps, you know, uh, its most brilliant aspect is the way in which they did it um, was different from the previous versions. It was better, in my opinion, from a storytelling standpoint. And they really, you're right, they brought closure, Brent, in a way that was satisfying, uh, which is, and, and, and whether or not it's actually closure remains to be seen. I, again, I, I would not be surprised if there was another game in the universe, at least. Um, and, and frankly, I wouldn't even be that surprised if they did another Nathan Drake in five or seven years or something. But yeah. Um, but the closure was very, was, uh, felt very satisfying, which is very difficult to do. And, uh, it, it's, it's a uh, few and far between that. Even some of the greatest shows of our, of our respective generations bring good, solid closure. And I, it was just, it was a, it was a remarkable, remarkable ending to the game. I, I agree. I, I felt like they, I, I kind of got to the end and, and felt like, well, that was, that was worth everything. You know, that was worth the ride. It, it left me in a in a really great place emotionally, and I, I have to, I mean I have to admit that I was I was playing on the stream and and doing my best to just not uh, just not you know crack up and start bubbling because uh, I was I was really really moved by I was really really moved by kind of you know where the game got in those final moments and that that sort of um, that statement subtle though it may be that while these games on the surface have been all about, you know, fortune and glory and treasure hunting and all that. But that, uh, you know, the, the really, really important things are the people, the people close to us. And absolutely, that, you know, just having you know, gone through this whole game series with all the high adventure and the shooting and the, the platforming and, uh, and the puzzle solving and all that for it to wrap up with that fundamental truth is a very, very worthwhile thing for, what could easily be uh, construed as, you know, just sort of co- cornball entertainment. Yeah, I, it was, uh, it was, it was that, it was everything you described and more, in my opinion, it was that, it was that touching. Um, before we wrap up, Brent, a couple more things I want to say. Okay. Uh, number one, I uh, initially ordered the special edition of this that came with the Steelbook case. Um, and uh, Amazon had a, like has 20% off for Prime members on games. I didn't even know that, and that 20% applied to both the collectors and the special and all those editions. Okay. Um, I saw somebody had posted a picture of the statue that came with the collector's edition on our website, and I immediately uh, was began to look for how to get a hold of that. And what I ended up doing actually was returning the special edition. Unbelievably, they took it back really? uh, and bought the – after I had opened it uh, – and bought the uh, collector's edition that had the statue – and if anybody's interested, it's it's probably it's, if not the best, one of the best gaming statues I've received with a collector's edition. And, and, uh, and Lauren so would, would know. Lauren's got. Lauren likes his gaming statues. I have a few. So um, if you're interested in it, I highly recommend when you get it through Amazon. The the collector's edition with the statue is only ninety bucks, um, and it's highly it's worth it. Absolutely. So I'll just throw that out there. And the steel case. I don't know if you've seen it, Brent, but you should look it up. The steel case is awesome. It looks like an Indiana Jones movie. Uh, poster the steel case itself is awesome so i just wanted to share that with people and then i had to ask you this footage we're watching today brent while we're doing the live broadcast yeah. is it your uh footage no no because my footage you know because i was doing the i was sharing through the uh through the playstation and right. so like you know the footage that i've got on my youtube channel you know like the screen is relatively small and it's got the chat room off to the right and my picture above it so no this is uh this comes from uh ghost robo and uh and his youtube channel Okay, because there's some really bad gameplay going on here. Yeah, well, not, not, no, listen, not that mine was substantially better. I mean, I'd love to lie to you and say, like, oh, I was way better than this guy, but probably not. Right. <laughs> um, all right, Brent. Well, I think unless you have anything else to uh, add on the postmortem, I think we've reached the end yep. of the postmortem. that way. Yes, uh, it was a good time. I really, really, really loved this game. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it as well. Now I can go back and watch your playthrough. Well, right. I mean, go ahead and do it. I'm just telling you not to expect very much. <laughs> I mean, expect expect a guy who says I can probably make that jump, and then finds out he's wrong, and then doesn't yeah. make it. Even just talking this through, and even watching uh, uh, watching the gameplay video as we were talking, I'm reminded of how great the game was. So. Uh, as usual, we want to thank all of you guys for being here with us. We always are looking for your feedback. So if you're listening to this uh, recorded, please be sure and add your thoughts in our comments. As usual, he is Brent Adams. I am Lauren Baumgarten. We will be back for E3. Remember, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. <laughs> <laughs>